All right, guys, how's it going? So it's a Sunday afternoon. I thought I'd make a very quick video today. And there was a really good animation from Travis Davids. And it's this kind of retro animation. It has a 8-bit feel, especially with the arcades and stuff. And the really nice scene. But there was one thing that I picked up on. And he's kind of got these animated sprites. And they're pretty damn cool, to be honest. And I thought, that would make a nice technique. That would be easy to do. And I think Travis has actually made a video or a breakdown how he done this, so if I can find the link, I'll put it in the description. It's pretty simple adding an image sequence to a plane, for example. So first of all, we need a sprite, or we need a GIF, and I'm going to show you a few different workflows and a few different tools that might help you out. So I really like this running animation. Now, this is actually a sprite sheet for Sonic, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to right-click, and I'm just going to save this as a GIF file. And there's a really good website, and it's called easygif.com. And it basically lets you convert things into GIFs. It lets you optimise GIF images. It lets you do a lot of things, to be honest. It's quite versatile. But this one is GIF Frame Extractor Splitter. So this will turn a GIF into actual frames, which means I can actually import this as an image sequence. Very easy stuff. And they also have a sprite sheet cutter. So earlier on, you might have seen something like this. And that's the sprite sheet. So you can actually cut this into individual images as well. So that's one thing to keep in mind just in case you want to change something like this. So I'm basically going to upload the Sonic GIF to the website. It has a few different options in terms of split. But one thing I need to do is output images in PNG format. And then I'll split the frames. And you can see here it's individually split the frames for me. And I just download this as a zip file. So once that's downloaded, I can quickly extract it. Now one thing you might run into is kind of bad naming convention, especially from a lot of these websites. Now you could go in and go right click, rename 1, right click, rename 2, etc. But that's kind of slow. So generally what I use is a bulk renamer. And it's a brilliant tool. Most people use something like this, especially when you're doing frame sequences. Seems to come in more handy when you're doing VDB, but anyway. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to quickly remove absolutely everything. And then I'll just do a numbering sequence. So they'll start at 1. So I'll just make it a prefix and I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'll hit rename. OK. And that means everything's renamed. So that's one technique for quickly renaming. So I'll quickly jump into Blender here because this is what we want to do. And I'll add in just a plane. So I can press Shift and A. We've got a plane here. I'll jump into the Shading tab. Let me join these together so we've got a bit more space. And I'll apply a new material. And what I can do here is I can search for an image texture. And I'll open up the first image in the sequence. So I believe it's this. It's number one. Now keep in track how many frames you've got. So I've actually got eight frames here. And you'll find out why. And I'll just take the colour into the base colour. And I'll change the single image to an image sequence. I'll enable auto refresh. So that just refreshes the image. So the reason I told you to keep track of the frames is I knew there was eight frames in the sequence. So I'll put the number of frames to eight. The start frame is one, I'll leave the colour space in sRGB and I'll actually apply the alpha to the alpha here. Now you won't actually see anything but it goes black. Let's quickly jump into the render viewport and let's quickly go through the frames. Now you'll notice one thing that actually stops when it gets to frame 8. If I quickly jump back into the shading tab and enable cyclic or cycles, that should really say cycles rather than cyclic but it means it will constantly repeat the frames over and over again. And that's a great way if you want to do one animation. Now the reason we're getting the black box is probably due to the materials. So I'll scroll right down here and I'll actually go to blending mode and I'll make it alpha clip. And there we go. We pretty much have a sprite sheet inside the blender. And this is great. And thank you to Travis for that bit of inspiration I suppose. Really great render mate. Good stuff. Do me a favour guys. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter. Support me on Gumroad. You know what to do. Take care.